Hey, coaches. Welcome back to Season 2, Episode 9. They were talking about short yardage running the football and using a scheme that you already have in, if you've already got the inside zone scheme, that is. Now, go ahead and tell you, I, give, I always try to give credit where credit is due when it comes to these things. Years ago, when I was a devout wing T guy, I got to sit under a guy named Wes Elrod. Some of you wing T old heads out there know who Coach Elrod is from up in Tennessee. Coached a lot of high school football up in that neck of the woods and coached some small college ball. He's from the Herschel Moore coaching tree. And, uh, and I know you wing T guys know who Herschel Moore is. And we've got him to come speak at a clinic that we put on when I was, when we first went wing T back in South, back about 20 years ago. We decided we need to learn a lot about uh, the wing T. What better way to do it than the clinic? So we put on a wing T clinic and invited Wes Elrod to come speak. We invited uh, uh, Erdley from, uh, what, Carnegie Mellon. Is that right? Carnegie Mellon in Pittsburgh. He came. And all these other coaches came to, to, to this clinic because it was a lot easier getting there where we had it. And we had about 50 coaches. And we didn't make any money. But we didn't lose any money, and we got clinic, and all these other coaches came and paid for us to get clinic. And we even had a guy fly in from Missouri that came to it. We did it like three years in a row, and uh, and it was really good to us. And uh, then we had uh, – I saw him in a clinic, like at a Glacier clinic or something like that. And then when I was at another school, we paid him to come and clinic our staff. And he's just a great football coach. Great football mind uh, when it comes to wing T stuff, but I'm always trying to borrow from other things. And he had this scheme that he called the doo doo scheme, and the doo doo scheme, simply put, was double double team. And when we started getting away from wing T, and it was something that we would do, it was it's like a call, and we would just make a call, and we would hit it. In the old wing T days, we'd do it off of. Uh, off the fullback trap. Teachers and staff, please. I reckon y'all heard that. Busted. Yeah, I'm on my planning period at school. I did season eight. I mean, excuse me, season two, episode eight on my planning period too. Which is why I don't have a uh, face in the in the picture because I was in the room, and it wasn't my usual backdrop that I do when I'm in my in my den at the house. Now back to this. We run it off the fullback trap, and we would just make the doo-doo call up front. And everybody knew we made the doo-doo call, and we had some signal for it. And no, it wasn't me taking a squad on the sideline. And uh, and the kids knew they'd block, and we rep, you know, we practice it up, and all this kind of stuff. And the action in the backfield was off the trap, and we we'd run it. Well, trying to hold on to that when we go to more spread type stuff, and more of the things that y'all see on my page, I figured out how we could use it with the inside zone. And here's what you do. You got to you got to bring a tight end in. You can't leave him split out out there or you can if the other team's ends are not going to squeeze. Or you can leave him out here. This this end right here can stay out here if those ends don't squeeze, okay? Now this is I say it short yardage, but it doesn't have to be. You know, it could be anything or any time. Uh, if you just want to grind it out and spread a team out and grind it out on them and make those ends start squeezing eventually, you can do that. But here's the double-double team concept, and you just do it with a call. You call your inside zone and you make your call. All right. You get a double-double You get a double team here, okay, and they don't come off. They're not combos. That's what the call means. The call means you lock on and you stay. Okay, whatever the call is you make to tell the kids they don't come off. Okay, and then over here, you get the double team here. And uh, if you want to know how to block an odd front with it, give me a holler at siegel.chip at gmail.com. Look down in the uh, description below, and you will see the uh, my email address, and I'll do, uh, show you how to do it against an odd front too. But anyway, real quick, I'll tell you, you're going to double the nose and double the play side defensive end with the guard and the tackle on the defensive end and with the backside guard and the center on the nose. But you got to bring other people in into the box, so to speak, 
and you got your H back, and I like starting, you can put him right here, you know, in a sniffer. I like putting him out here and making this guy play out here because you never can tell when you get that motion, he may not bump into the box. You know, he may not, or he may be told, hey, motion away, crash off the edge, which is great because he's never going to get there when that thing hits a gap. You know, a lot of teams still do that. You know, motion away from you, you know, you come crashing in off that A gap, I mean, off that backside, and see what you can cause to happen in the backfield. I don't know why they do it, but a lot of people still do it. Used to, everybody did it, especially on jet motion. But you get the double team here and the double team here. Henceforth, the double double team. Okay? Your H leads on your mic, and you can do the RPO that we talked about in the previous episodes. Where you got the the glance on the on the backside and the under on the backside, and you read the wheel because you can't block them all if you're double double teaming. Okay, so you do that, and you just run your inside zone scheme, pressing the a gap, and it's yeah, I'm telling you, it's just a great scheme. You know, uh, it's not something you can probably line up in and do play after play after play. I wouldn't think not against a a, a varsity level team or a well coached team, but it may be something on the younger levels you can do. You know, teams you you want to get in there and go double tight and at a full house backfield and you got plenty of backs to block the linebackers and you just double team the crap out of those interior linemen uh, against the split front and double team the crap out of the nose and the the foretech against an odd front and just make folks like it just grind it out on them you know, and I just really it's it's something that you do like I said you do it in short yardage now goal line is not so effective. Because you're going to wind up with a goal line defense and you're going to get calls where you have to block gaps or, you know, base block everything, whatever it is, average you handle a goal line defense. But in the middle of the field, if it's third and two, third and one, okay, you line up in this joker. You know, the great way to do it is put this guy here at wing and do your dummy count and see if they jump and then shift him in or motion him in and then run the play. Because if it's third and one, third and two, you know, you see if you can get them to jump off sides and get a freebie, and you keep this in your pocket. I'm going to tell you something else it does, too. You do this once or twice a game in short yardage. Meanwhile, that defensive coordinator on Sunday afternoon with the team on your schedule next, he's having to spend a lot of time on a play you didn't run but a couple of times, but you ran it at key times in your uh, in the game. And they know they got to be able to have an answer for that and come up with that. If they come up with something pre-snap, you know, hey, call timeout. Has that been important to you? Is that big important part in the game? All right, now, you can also take the RPO out of it, and here's how you do that. Now, if you're going to take the RPO out of it, you've got to account for that wheel backer that you were reading when you were doing your RPO, okay? So what I would do is motion this guy in, and you may want to make a personnel change to get a more physical blocker. But a lot of high schools, you know, that kid's physical enough to get in there and get in that joker's way. And you motion this guy in right here, okay? And then you got your lead blocker on the wheel. You still got your double-double teams, okay? Two double teams in the middle of the formation, in the middle of the play. You still got your H lead. Now, he's already lined up in here because you can't have two guys in motion, so he lined up in here. And, you, and it looks just like your regular, you know, your power set. And again, if the ends don't crash, if they don't squeeze, you can just leave this cat out here, and that'll take that dog out of the box a little bit in the corner too. Now, you can still RPO it with this if you want to, and pre-snap that joker. It doesn't have to be an under. I just left that in there because I copied and pasted this, this play. It could be just a, a hitch. Just three steps, turn around and look. Remember, it's short yardage anyway. If when this guy goes in motion, it's not really an RPO, but it's a gift. And this cat comes all the way in here, and this guy's playing off far enough, just let the quarterback raise up and throw the hitch or throw the little quick stand pass. Okay? That's if they're playing off of you out here, and this guy comes inside here, so he wants to help out and get involved in the play. So you motion this guy right here. You got your lead on your wheel. This guy here is lined up here. You got your lead on your mic. You got a double team on the three. You got a double team on the A-gap defender, and they don't come off. Stress that. This is pure double team. And a Wes, El Wes Elrod called it the doo-doo. As God is my witness, if somebody out there has heard Wes speak and talk on it, hit me up at siegel.chip 
at gmail.com. All right, look down in the description below, and I'll have it for you. Don't forget, uh, hit me up on Facebook at uh, Football Talk with Coach Chip. And, uh, and y'all be elite. <laughs>